Okay, again, my name is Newman Allen, and I am the Center for Inquiry Transnational Director of uh, Transnational Programs. And I wanted to talk a little bit about gay rights and the rights of lesbians, bisexuals, and transgender persons, because this is part of our overall defense of human rights. And I wanted to start by talking about some of the last two questions that were raised. Uh, there was a question of westernization and this notion that these particular ideas come from the Western world and that they don't cut across cultures. And that has been a problem, and I think we have to confront that problem. For example, I do a lot of traveling in Africa. And when I've gone to Africa, I've had that same type of question put to me, especially on the topic of homophobia and gay rights. They would say that homosexuality is not African. It's something that was imported to us from the Western world. They would also add that they didn't believe homosexuality was natural. And so confronted with that, I had to start by discussing the fact that just for, for example, just because an idea comes from the West doesn't mean that it can't translate. And uh, I also had to deal with this whole notion of cultural relativism, that just because we developed a particular idea in our culture, it must be a good idea, and it cannot be subjected to debate, or it cannot come into conflict with an idea that comes from another country. Uh, what we have to do is try to agree upon what is right for human beings in general, as far as that is possible. And so as humanists, we try to take our human experience as our center and go from there, rather than trying to have it culturally based or based in one particular part of the world, try to focus on us as human beings and what we would want for human beings worldwide. So we are arguing for such things as self-determination, the right of privacy, human autonomy of the individual, and what have you. But we're also trying to do that across the board to be consistent. Not to have a hierarchy, as someone said, a hierarchy of secular persons and religious persons, but to have a, a, a body of knowledge that we can all draw upon, as opposed to a lot of the religions. For example, a religionist, not our religionist, but a religionist might tell you that they follow the ethic of obedience. That is, whatever is in their particular religious text has to be true, and it cannot be debated. But as humanists, we say that our, re our knowledge is, is uh, accessible, and that there aren't any type of mystic ideas to which we cannot relate or to which we cannot uh, expose ourselves to. We don't believe that there are certain people who have special access to knowledge that the rest of us cannot access. And so as humanists, we say that our ideas are to be put up for critical examination, but not just our ideas, all ideas, religious ideas, mystical ideas, whatever the case might be. So uh, yes, some of these ideas originated in the West, but that doesn't mean they have to be limited to the West. And it doesn't necessarily mean that we're disrespecting other cultures. All it means is that sometimes we have to transcend our culture, sometimes we have to transcend our religion, and as Paul Kurtz alluded to, sometimes we have to move forward, and the religions that were conceived in the past, these were our first attempts at morality. And usually our first attempts at anything are not our best attempts. And as we proceed forward, sometimes it's necessary to leave those ideas behind. And we believe that one of those ideas we need to leave behind is the idea of homophobia. Now, if you look at religious texts such as the Bible and the Quran, these texts condone not only violence against homosexuals, but uh, putting them to death because homosexuality is considered to be a grave sin. For example, if you look at the Old Testament and Leviticus 2013, you will see that homosexuals are supposed to be put to death. But uh, we think that this blind ethic uh, of obedience needs to be overruled by an ethic of compassion. And many religionists are in agreement with us, which is why you will find many religionists in the United States and throughout the Western world, and even to a lesser extent throughout Africa and Latin America, who will get involved in the rights of lesbians, gays, bisexuals, and transgender persons, even though what they're doing might contradict their own biblical 
ideals for their own biblical teachings, still they believe that what comes first is not a blind obedience to any particular ethical principle, but what comes first is compassion for your fellow human beings. And we believe that as long as you have that ethic of compassion, you'll be uh, in a much better position uh, to put yourself uh, in a way where you are able to advance human rights as opposed to trying to, to deny people their human rights. And another thing that was brought up earlier was uh, autonomy or freedom within the law. And uh, that's what we're advocating. We're not advocating anarchy. We're not advocating that anything goes, which is what a lot of people believe we are advocating. We do believe that there are laws. And the question was also brought up, who makes those laws? Well, we believe that we as human beings have to make those laws. Now, we as human beings in democratic societies have to elect the best representatives possible to pass those laws. And it doesn't mean that we're necessarily going to always have the right idea. Now, an example of that would be in the United States, we have the National Football League. And every year, the National Football League comes together to change rules. They have a rules committee, which includes all of the owners and various others. They come together and change rules. What they don't do is have to pray to a football god. Or they don't have to have a, ten command, a set of ten commandments coming from a football god. They realize that though we are fallible human beings, we can change and we can move forward. And so every year, they can look at a rule and say, this is a bad rule, let's change it. But if you have an ethic of obedience, that becomes impossible to do because you already believe, as the religious right in the United States believes, that you have all of the evidence or all of the knowledge on the reality that you need. And so they can't correct their ideas if they have that particular mindset. The only types of religious people who can correct those ideas are the progressives who do believe in moving forward and, and who do believe in challenging their own religious assumptions. And so that's pretty much what we are advocating, as we are advocating morality within limits morality within the law. And we're not advocating that we go about trying to trample upon everyone's rights, but we're trying to broaden those rights for everyone. And uh, as far as is homophobia, uh, it's something that we believe in opposing worldwide. And although there are going to be cultural clashes, we have to understand that cultural relativism is a problem. We have to try our best to come together and understand that there are certain common moral decencies that Paul Kirst likes to talk about, certain moral ideas that we can all appreciate and that we can all accept. But of course, that's not always the case. There will be cultural differences. But in this world, we have to try to transcend those cultural differences, and we have to try to come up with a, a, an ethic of compassion and an appreciation for the fact that human beings worldwide should have that freedom within limits. And so that's pretty much what we are advocating. Now, my question is, why are people homophobic to begin with? And a lot of it has to do with culture, but a lot of it also has to do with religion, as I said before. And as humanists, uh, we are saying that a lot of these ideas that appear to be good ideas in the past simply don't appear to be so good today. And you have so many problems in other parts of the world that we just don't experience in the Western world. And uh, I believe that the ideas that we have in the Western world that have done so much to oppose homophobia and to prevent violence against gays is something that we need to promote worldwide. If you go to Africa or if you go to Latin America, and particularly if you go to the Caribbean and Jamaica, you'll have a homophobia to the point where gays are fearing for their lives for good reason. They can be killed with impunity. They can be imprisoned with impunity. In Africa, you have several nations that have laws against homosexuality. You can be arrested. And in Nigeria now, uh, they're still promoting a law in which you can be arrested even if you merely associate with gays. So this type of homophobia, although it might be embraced by many people in other parts of the world, is something that we all have to come out and oppose. And it's not just people outside of Africa and outside of Jamaica and outside of Latin America that are in opposition. The last time I was in Africa was in 2007, and there were numerous gay rights groups on the African continent, and there are numerous gay rights groups in Jamaica and other parts of the world. So this isn't something that we're necessarily transporting 
This is something that is arising from the people within their particular societies who are being fed up with being mistreated. And the same thing can be said with another uh, phenomenon, female genital mutilation. This is a problem in numerous African countries and in numerous Arab countries. And there are people there who will again argue, this is our particular cultural viewpoint and no one has the right to come in and tell us what to do about it. However, back in the 1990s, there were 25 various groups in Africa, women's groups in 25 different nations that were leading the fight against female genital mutilation. Not because they were brainwashed by Westerners, but because they wanted their rights, because they understood that they do have uh, individual autonomy, they do have the right to their own bodies, to control of their own bodies. And so uh, this is, these are rights that uh, do uh, go across the world. They cut across the human spectrum and they're just not limited by culture, and they're just not limited by what particular part of the world you might come from. They're rights that we believe help to make for a better world.